All right, guys, what's going on? So today, Hunter had a really good idea for a video topic, and it's going to be some of the best investments that you can make early on whenever you start bass fishing or, you know, late on when you start bass fishing. I know some of these things I kind of cut corners on, tried to save money for years and years and years, and it really affected some of my performance sometimes and kind of, you know, hurt my efficiency on the water. And that's some of the things that, you know, I look back on and think it was kind of dumb. You know, I should have learned my lesson, bit the bullet, and made it happen a little bit earlier on some of these things. But first off, this video is sponsored by Shop Carl's. If you have not already used the code WELCHER10, you can get $10 off your first order of $25 or more. So Shop Carl's also has a lot of baits from a lot of brands early. If you get a membership, you can go get early access to colors, baits, all that type of stuff. It's really cool, and you get updates and expedited shipping and all that type of stuff. But let's jump right into this. You see I've got one rod laying out, and I'm going to get into that in a second, but one of the things that I did early on is I got a good pair of sunglasses. You know, there's, I would say, four or five brands that make really, really good sunglasses that have good lenses, all that type of stuff. That's one thing, in my opinion, you cannot go without. I know I've, I've had some days where I've used, you know, cheaper sunglasses or glasses that don't have the right kind of tint or whatever, and at the end of the day, my eyes just feel drained and tired and stuff like that. So a good pair of sunglasses are extremely, extremely important on the water. Another thing, if you're not taking care of your skin, which I'm guilty of, you need to be wearing sunscreen and sunblock out there, but the sun, the sun is our... You know one thing that we're in the most that makes our sport different than a lot of other sports is we are outside all day for eight hours 10 hours 12 hours 16 hours sometimes out there in the sun so i mean that's it's really important to protect your eyes especially and also protect your face and hands and stuff like that so that's one of the things that i did early on has got a good pair of sunglasses you know so and that's that's pretty good? important a good pair of sunglasses is um you want really good polarization you really want that but the thing about me is I have very sensitive eyes to sunlight. I think that helps me be able to see in the water well because my eyes are very like sensitive and I can really notice things. But it also makes it where if I'm not wearing good sunglasses, I literally almost can't open my eyes outside sometimes in, in some brands of sunglasses or some tints and stuff like that. So for me, you want something that really protects your eyes and also you can see in the water really, really well. I've always liked an amber base. The amber base is going to allow a little bit more sunlight in. So, I mean, if you have super sensitive eyes, you might want to go to like a dark gray or black base or whatever. But I always use the amber base. I've worn a, a bunch of different brands, you know. I, if I've wore the sunglasses, I've thought they're really, really good, you know. So, that's one thing for me is something that's that important, like a pair of glasses. I'm never going to wear a pair that I don't like, you know. So, I wear three or four different brands all the time. But it's just it's because I feel like they are some really, really good sunglasses. So, another thing that I shortchanged on for a long Wait, time. still about the sunglasses. Yep. You always make sure that, like, my... Kyle hates my glasses, first of all. Second of all, like, you make sure there's no space. On the sides. Yep. yep. So you don't want... Whenever you're sight fishing or just out in the sun a lot anyways, you don't want a lot of sunlight to get in around the sides of the sunglasses, the tops of the sunglasses. That's kind of why we wear a hood a lot of times. It just keeps the sunlight you know nothing can penetrate anything around because it, it messes up your vision you know it, it messes up your view i've wore sunglasses before that had like a uh clear and like a, a i guess they call it turtle imprint on the side and i actually felt like sun could penetrate through because it was like a translucent you know frames on the sunglasses i felt like sun could get through the sides of the sunglasses and i was getting a glare on the inside of the sunglasses in, in this one particular pair that i had they were really translucent and the sun could come through and I, I could see them on the inside of my sunglasses. So I just hated those sunglasses. So I always wear a dark color. I always make sure that it's solid and then I don't want much light to be able to come on the side. I really want no light to be able to come in on the sides like that. So like Hunter wears, you know, like the aviator style sunglasses where they're just not, they're just not good for, for sight fishing. Like if you're driving down the road, whatever, you can wear them. But like if you're on the water, you want to have a really good pair of sunglasses that wrap around your face and stuff like that. So I did that early on, and that's one of the things that I'm glad I did because I love sight fishing. I don't care if they're swimming around, suspended under docks, anything. I just like seeing bass and then casting at the bass. So now we can do that with that screen up there. But, you know, it's still more fun to see them with your eyes. But anyways, another thing that I did is I shortchanged on a rain suit for a long, long time. Like, I would wear... I had a ski jacket I was wearing. I had whatever pants I could get that looked like they might be water resistant. And I just got soaked. Like I, I literally for the first five, six, seven years that I fished, 
if it rained, I was just gonna get wet. Like period, didn't matter if it was 25 degrees, 40 degrees, what, or, or 100 degrees. If I rained, I was, if it rained, I was gonna get wet. I did not have a good rain suit for a long, long time. And I think back to some of those days where I just love fishing so much that I never even really let it affect me. But how much more comfortable I would have been on the water and more willing to like ride around and all that stuff in the rain because if I'd have just had a good rain suit. But it I, really does seem like a huge investment though. Like it does. I mean, going they're, for they're it. expensive. They're, they're, they are. They're really expensive. All of them are. You can't. But you know, some of them you can have for eight or ten years. You know, you have them for a long time. But I really, I can think back to me fishing and piecing stuff together just to try to go you know and double layering up hoodies and putting a jacket over the top of it that i know wasn't going to keep me dry bringing a change of clothes like if the forecast said the rain was going to blow out at 11 30 i would bring some extra clothes because at 11 30 i was going to try to put on new shirts and new pants and stuff like that because i knew i was going to be soaked like i just never wanted to make that five six seven hundred dollar investment and some rain suits are go for a thousand fifteen hundred i mean some of them are two thousand they're super super expensive i never did that for a long long time and then now i, I wear striker rain rain gear now and i mean just the difference that it makes in your attitude on the water you know it's just it's just crazy but anyways that's one really big one that i am they also have a cheaper version of they that do have a cheaper version right? now they got one you can get for between four and five hundred dollars, you know, for a, a Vortex rain suit. I've been wearing it a lot. It's a really, really good one, but it's Until a little I'm more affordable. Next week. Hunter's getting the what? The new uh, yeah. women's adrenaline rain suit. Anthony, what's it called? Is it adrenaline? I'm not, I'm not super familiar with the women's stuff. I know I wear the adrenaline. But but Hunter's about getting, to come out. Yeah, Hunter's getting one. It actually, it actually looks really, really good. But I, I shot myself in the foot as far as that goes for a long, long time. And I think, like I said, I think back on. I'm like, man, that that was kind of dumb, you know. But Another thing that I shortchanged on for a long time was a quality spinning reel. And I used to hate throwing a spinning reel so much because I had a $40 Walmart spin reel that I used forever. I used it forever. The drag system was terrible. I threw it on a cheap rod, had bad guides on it. And that's one of the things that this is a, the reason that I say this is the more important rod to, to to get is this is your bail out rod a couple of different rods that i want to have really good drag system on it's going to be my my cranking rod that i throw 10 8 pound test on i throw you know i, I used to have a cranking rod that i threw 10 pound test on all the time i'd use it for jerk bait stuff like that i only had five or six rods for a long when i qualified for the elites i think i had like less than 10 rods so i mean i had to i had to change stuff around a lot but you know that light line stuff when i'm flipping a jig when I'm punching grass, when I'm throwing a frog, all that type of stuff, I have the drag locked down. You can really get away with a cheaper reel and a cheaper rod and stuff for that. Now, yeah, I want something super sensitive when I'm dragging a worm, all that type of stuff, but this light line stuff, the baits that you have to throw when it's tough that really bail you out, those are the ones that I think back on, I think, man, that was kind of dumb because I used to have a really nice jig rod and reel. Like, like that was my most expensive setup. That's all I want to throw, skip a jig. Had a pretty nice frog one. But, you know, I used to lose and break off so many fish whenever it was time to throw that wacky rig, throw that shaky head, whatever. I used to lose so many and break off so many because my drag system was terrible on it. You know, I'm sponsored by Fuji. I like to have Fuji guys on everything. And it's really a system, actually. This is a new... 13 fishing reel that'll be out pretty soon but the drag system on it's phenomenal that, that's the one that i prefer now but there's there's a lot of different brands that have really good drag systems this is just something that you cannot shortchange. you have to have a quality spinning reel especially i mean if you're fishing a lake that is always muddy all the time and you're never gonna throw a spin reel i understand i get it but where i'm at we have a lot of spotted bass we have a lot of you know clear water a lot of times and we have to throw these and they bail us out a lot of times you know so that's one of the times when, it, when it's tough and you got two hours left in a tournament, you got two fish, you don't want to be breaking off your next bite. You know, that, that's whenever it really comes in play. And, you know, I have Fuji guides on here. It helps the whole system because, I mean, the guides add resistance. Everything adds resistance on the rod from the roller right here to the guides, everything. That's why I use Fuji because it's the smoothest drag system. But, I mean, you know, they, they're, they're high end. They're, you know, more expensive guides, all that type of stuff. But that setup right there, if I had to pick two setups that I would spend a lot of money on, it would be my shallow cranking setup that I throw in the winter with 10 pound line and small little treble hooks and stuff like that. Because when you hook a big one on small treble hooks and 10 pound line, 
and they start pulling drag, it better, you know, pull off smoothly and, and be, you know, a really smooth transition whenever that fish ruins because you don't want to pull those those hooks out. You don't want to rip a hole in that fish's mouth. You don't want to break off on 10 pound line. You know, you're bouncing off rocks and stuff like that. So drag systems on those lower line reels and rods are a huge thing that I shortchanged myself on for a long time. And I think back to how, how dumb it was, like how many tournaments that, you know, I would throw a a, you know a bait on a spin rod up under a dock or whatever and I'd have one that comes out and I mean my dra He'd get to the boat and start pulling. I just break him off, you know, and it was just because the drag would not start up smoothly enough, you know, so I, I Really shot myself in the foot with that just trying to kind of piece and stuff together to get by and have a spinning reel and stuff like that So probably the best thing that ever happened to me is I was driving. I was fishing terminal lake you follow um, The lower unit actually came off the boat the lower unit had been cracked for a while no, nobody knew it. It was in, internal in the case. Somebody hit a stump and uh, it actually wasn't my boat I was borrowing a boat and the lower unit actually fell off the boat and whenever it fell off the boat The boat wiped out. It did like a 180 Dived in the back. All my rods flew off the side of the boat. Every rod I had came out of the rod strap I mean, I was going 72 miles an hour. The rod came off. They went to the water. I went over there to get my rods And they were all bunched up and I got them saved on my rod. The only one I lost was that old cheap spinning rod that I had and I lost it so I, I, I upgraded from that one and bought a lot better one and from that day forward I, I just don't know why I ever used that cheap stuff you know because it's, it I mean there's just no reason to I mean unless you just absolutely do not have the money at all then you can make do but from that point forward I, I realized the power of having the right drag system and the right rod and all that stuff for for especially your spinning stuff so you know that's kind of how I shot myself in the foot. Another thing that I did is I held out on buying the forward face sonar for a long time, but that is a huge investment that you don't have to have. There's only a there's only probably 25 or 30 percent of lakes where to consistently compete for a win 12 months out of the year you have to have it. I, I don't live close to to any of them, you know. So I, all the tournaments I fish around here and stuff, you don't have to have it. Like you definitely don't have to have it. But I held off on that for about a year longer than I should have. I should have got on that train. A year sooner and it would have helped me out a ton but hey that's what we did I've done some stuff like that learn from it and I'm trying to tell y'all so that y'all don't look back and think about how dumb it was so that's some things that I think really help you in bass fishing whenever you're starting out or not even starting out you know like I was I was five six seven years deep still doing that dumb stuff so anyways that's my take on how to be more efficient on the water and the investments that you have to make in bass fishing so I appreciate y'all watching if you have and we'll any yeah leave some comments on, on one thing if there's something that you held off on and then finally got and you're like man I'm glad I did that leave me a comment and let me know what it is we got stained water and uh, they might be biting some reaction baits today so could be a fun day we're about to film that also <laughs>